Welcome to Manta Mentoring. I am Ray, also known as Star Manta, uh, and I'm going to be teaching you some things about using Git with Unity. Um, uh, this is going to uh, help a lot of people with uh, with not losing data, hopefully. Um, and and so that's a, as good a place to start is why do you why should you be using Git? Um, and I'm going to start with that with some examples from the Unity forums, uh, like this one, for example. Uh, Unity, del Unity deleted my scene. Is there a way to get it back? You always need a backup of your project. Uh, or this one. What about history files in Windows Vista? No, really, it's gone. All the scripts in my project have been corrupted. And yeah, of course it's gone. Um, this one, help my entire project is broken, and I really love the top and really only reply to this, which is roll back to the latest backup. Um, so that's the first reason to use Git, uh, which is to prevent the data loss. Anything can happen to your project file. Um, Unity usually doesn't break it, but occasionally it does, and if it does, you're really screwed. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's the first thing, is to prevent data loss. Uh, then the second thing is finding regression bugs, um, and uh, this is this is basically when you make a change, it introduces a bug in an unexpected place, um, and you basically need to figure out where it, where it was introduced or, and how to fix it. Um, this is especially important if you have a, a big project with a lot of interconnected script files. Changing one thing changes ten other things, um, and if you have Git, you can actually just just jump back version by version by version until you find one that doesn't have the bug in it, and then you can tell exactly what line of code changed, and that can help you narrow down bugs really fast. Um, and then the next next reason is it helps you work efficiently on a team. I'll probably have a future uh, a future talk where I go over you know how to do this more effectively. Which, uh, but essentially, Git allows you allows multiple developers working on the same project uh, to sort of have independent streams of of uh, of development, and you can merge those and and you know branch off from those as at any point. Um, and so, yeah, that's uh, that's basically uh, those are the main reasons that people use Git. There's some other reasons, but uh, those are, those are pretty much the highlights. Um, and there, so there are other things besides Git. Um, all source control is valid. Uh, the most important thing is just to use some source control. Uh, Git is my preferred one. It's probably the most popular, um, but it's not the only one out there. Uh, a few that are that work very similarly to Git in most ways um, are Subversion and Mercurial. Um, these are like uh, th these are these do a lot of things differently behind the scenes, but in terms of the day-to-day -day usage, they're not that they're very not very much not. Uh, but in, in terms of day-to-day -day usage, they're really not that different from Git. Um, next next uh, source control to talk about is Perforce. Uh, Perforce is uh, it's a little bit different concept. Um, it's, whereas Git is more of a, let's make some changes and then we'll commit them and merge them later. Perforce is more of a, I'm going to own this particular file in the project until I'm done with it and then I'll release it. It's a little bit different uh, workflow. Um, but it still it still has a lot of the same benefits. It's just a you know different habits you have to be in. The last one we have is Unity Collaborate. Uh, this is built into the Unity editor. Um, if you've seen in the top right, there's a uh, there's a little button for that, and um, that will be uh, and that will be a lot of people's uh, first choice because just because it's built in, it's just there. Um, I had some bad experiences with it when it was first being de uh, developed, uh, so I haven't ever uh, really used it that much. Um, but if uh, that sort of uh, if that sort of integration appeals to you, then uh, then by all means, um, have at it. Um, so here are some uh, resources that you'll uh, you're, you're going to need for uh, for this tutorial. Uh, first is you need a Git hosting service. There are an infinite number of these online, um, and there's a few of the more popular ones. Uh, GitLab is my personal favorite. Um, I just like the website the most. Um, GitHub is is uh, one of the oldest and uh, most popular there. Uh, Bitbucket 
um, it is uh, pretty popular. And then Amazon's is AWS Code Commit, um, which if you're using other Amazon services, that might be a, uh, the best option for you. Um, next thing you'll need is a Git client. Um, there is a command line Git client, uh, which is sort of the default Git client that most people uh, are, are going to be aware of. Um, and you know, fundamentally, if someone says refers to Git as as software, then this is the, what they're talking about. Um, however, there are a lot of uh, of uh, GUI clients out there um, where you can work in Windows uh, rather than typing in commands. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, there's really only one that's worth considering, and that is Fork. Um, a fork isn't free; it's it's fifty dollars, but it is just Nagware. Um, so it's just like WinRAR. You can just keep clicking ignore. Uh, and and it'll uh, and then it'll leave you alone for a little while, um, but the fork is just head and shoulders over every other Git client I've ever used, uh, so it's pretty great. <clears throat> um, next, obviously, you need Unity, um, at least for this tutorial. Uh, Unity is not a requirement for Git, um, but you know, given that this is a tutorial for using Git with Unity, it's going to be important in that respect. Um, all right. Uh, the, uh, it's important to realize that uh, Git works just fine independently of Unity and I actually use it for a number of projects aside from that. Um, in fact, all of my files uh, you know, for these videos, my notes and everything like that, uh, those are going to be put into a Git repository um, as soon as I have one set up here, which we're going to show be doing in a demo uh, momentarily. Um, and, f and the last thing is you need to get a Unity git ignore file. Um, and uh, this file is going to be a fairly specific. Um, I'll, I'll, link, I'll, link, I'll link one of these files down below. Um, and this is going to basically help you ignore all of the Unity files that don't actually need to be synced. Um, this is going to help speed up git uh, as well as making sure that you um, uh, that you don't uh, commit all sorts of junk and temp files and use up space on your uh, on your git server and everything um, So yeah, uh, go ahead and uh, grab the git ignore file that's linked below and all right, And with that let's go ahead and uh, and start this uh, start this process um, So here's GitLab's website. Like I said, we're going to be uh, working with this um, Ignore this whole free trial thing up here because um, if you go to pricing you can just select a free plan and it's all and it's uh, and it will just remain free um, uh, so go ahead and uh, fill in your information here um, and pick your username uh, it's gonna be the Manta middleware uh, 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 account for this and click register Save all your stuff. Uh, so I'm making this public uh, just because you guys are going to be able to see, to get a lot of the project files that I have, um, and you can make yours private if you would rather not have that. That can be changed later. Uh, project name, and this is going to be. Um, uh, giving videos for Mental Middleware videos. Uh, this one's going to be private. A lot of the other ones I'm gonna, are going to be public, but this one is just for me. Um, and so at this point, uh, a lot of you are probably going to pick novice. I'm going to click experienced here. Um, but yeah, you may as well click click on novice. Uh, okay, so um, this drops you into this. Uh, into this sort of baby's first repository. Um, this isn't the one that you're going to want to use. It has some information about uh, how to how to use GitLab. Uh, if you want to follow some of these steps, then that will probably have some further information. But we're going to pretty much ignore this one and go over to GitLab <coughs> uh, projects here. Uh, so if you go to your projects. And so you'll see this learn learn GitLab here and is one and MM video is the one that I just created. So I'm going to click on that. Um, if you were using the uh, 
If you're using the command line, then this is the instructions that you would follow there. Uh, we are not, which actually makes it much easier. <clears throat> this is the clone button. Clone is a magic word in Git. Uh, clone basically means download this repository and then keep it up to date. Um, it's obviously not quite, not entirely that simple, but for our purposes, it is. Uh, so you can clone with HTTPS. Copy the URL here, um, and then you're going to come over here, file, clone. So this is this has grabbed the URL from the clipboard. Um, it's going to make a make a folder inside whatever folder you have picked here. So this would be your, you know, programming master, whatever parent folder you have for all your programming stuff. And then this is the name of the folder inside that. So I'm going to clone that. And so this is going to be the credentials that you just created. Uh... <clears throat> Alright, and so you see there is nothing here. Uh, uh, this view in, in a repository you've been using for a while would have a bunch of stuff in it, but right now there is not anything in there. So we need to have an initial commit. Um, so, so here's what we're going to do for that. Um, uh, first of all, let's go ahead and find that folder on our hard drive uh, that is inside here, and there it is. Um, and so I'm just going to take my uh, production notes and my video topics and my logo, and I'll go ahead and drop those in there. So you see that is right here. And so now I come over, come back over to Fork, and you see you've got these this uh, thing here that says changes. Uh, there's my logo file notes. There's my, yeah. Uh, and so so I'm going to click on stage. Stage will will uh, move this file up, uh, whatever file you have here, down to this area called staged. Uh, you can unstage it, and if you just want to commit everything that's in that folder right now, you can click this stage all button right here. And it'll move everything down there. Uh, the next thing you need is a commit subject, and that'll go right here. Um, nine times out of ten, you're just going to want to say initial commit for the first thing you do here. Um, now you can just just click this uh, commit files button here, or you can look at this uh, little drop down here, and uh, you can use commit and push, uh, which sort of of, uh, which sort, sort of merges all the steps into uh, one process. Uh, I like doing this more, more often than not, but uh, sometimes I just like to commit things uh, on, on their own. The, bit, the difference basically is that uh, commit just sort of says, here's this is a version of my project folder, um, and push now says, okay, now sync that up to the server. Um, so you can see here, we've got our initial commit, uh, master is the branch that this is called that uh, that we're on by default. So now, if we were to go over here and refresh this page, um, if we go to activity, for example, uh, then you can see we we created this project um, push events. Have you not pushed? Okay. Um, so you can see this little, it's got this little icon here, um, which uh, indicates that it is, has been synced up to the server. If we come over to here, you can see push events. Uh, it says I've pushed the wrench. Um, and if you go to details, then you can see you've got these files in my repository. Now those files are, those are really safe. They're not only backed up, they're you know, the state of those files it has been saved. So I can do anything I want to those files. Um, and no matter what I, what I do, I can always come back to how they were at this moment. Um, and that is part of the magic of Git. So uh, let's bring Unity into this equation, shall we? All right, so let's go ahead and fire up Unity. And I'm going to create a new project. Um, and so what I'm going, so what I'm going to actually do is make this, uh, demo temp because in a second we're going to, uh, move it over. Uh, so this is just creating a file, letting Unity do its thing. Make this, 
uh, I'm gonna demo temp because in a second. Hey, okay, there they are. Um, and just for the sake of it, I'm just gonna try to create a little. Uh, just, just create a little file just to have a file there. Um, so, um, so that so that's our that's our project file. Uh, we can come into here and see the M M demo temp, and there it is. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take all these files, copy, come into our video uh, uh, folder with the Git. If you if you have a uh, if you have hidden items checked in uh, uh, in uh, Explorer, then you'll be able to see this little Git dot Git folder here. Um, and that's, you don't ever want to go into that and start messing with it, but that is where it's going to keep all of the, the history of the folder sort of information. Um, so let's paste our project file into here. And because I'm moving this, I'm going to go ahead and close Unity. Um, all right, and so our Unity project is here. And so let's go ahead and uh, tab back over to Fork. And you see we have a lot of files here. Uh, that is too many files. I mean, not too many in the sense that it won't work, just too many, it's just we don't want them. Um, so this is where that gitignore file comes in. Um, and here's the, here is the file. Um, so we're just gonna click save as here and we're gonna uh, drop this right into our, um, uh, our repository right in the root folder next to this git folder. Um, and just like that git folder, we want to have we want it to start with a dot, and it's just going to be dot git ignore. Uh, browsers like to think they're smart and add the txt extension because it's a text file. We don't want that. We want dot git ignore, no extension. Um, and you may have to select all files here in order to make to let it allow you to do that. All right, so click save. All right, so now when we come over here. Um, You'll notice there are many, many fewer files here. Make sure that you stage the gitignore file. Um, if we go ahead and expand this window a little bit, uh, staging basically, as as it says, it stages the file. It, say, it sort of uh, stores the current version of that file, and once you've staged all the files in a particular set of changes, uh, then you'll be able to commit them. Um, and in this case, I actually want to go ahead and just commit the entire thing. So you click that stage all button, everything pops down there. Um, and so let's call this one initial unity commit. And commit 28 files. And so here's our, our initial unity commit. You can see all the files that changed in this commit. Uh, you can just browse the file tree as it was in that commit. Um, you can see the, you know, all the information about it. Um, one thing that you, that you should take, take note of is this SHA. Um, if you are working with a team and you need to refer to this commit specifically, uh, rather than trying to, uh, you know, saying the name of the commit, which you could do, uh, but on a big file, there's likely going to be uh, more than one of those with very similar names. But the uh, this SHA, which the first few letters of it also appear over here, uh, those that is is a unique identifier. Um, it's it'll, be different every time and you, you can go use it to go right to a specific commit um, and so now that we've got that uh, you notice we've got these little blue dots on these two commits here uh, that's because those are committed on my local machine but they haven't yet been pushed up to the server uh, so let's go ahead and do that we push and uh, the default settings here are gonna be fine you click push and up it goes now you see this little uh, this little icon here. If we mouse over it, it says origin slash master. Uh, origin basically means the server. Um, it's the main server from which all these Git files are going to be synced up with. <clears throat> um, so we have our Unity file here. Um, now we're going to pop back over to Unity Hub. Uh, because we moved it, I'm actually going to going to click add and select the file the folder that we moved it to. Um, and it's going to open that up again. Right. And here it is. Um, so the last thing I want to demonstrate is I want to make a horrible mistake. Um, 
and let's say I'm in, in here working on work on this and whoops I accidentally hit delete and somehow hit enter uh, without meaning to oh no everything is terrible well if we come over here to see the changes um, well you can see that it's got this here indicating that these files including their meta files uh, have been deleted um, and so we can just go ahead go ahead in here right click discard changes or you can hit the delete key um, that discards all the changes in those files so we pop back over to unity and look they magically reappeared um, and that is the magic of git right there is is that you can just jump around on, on your in your history you can you can save your changes you can get rid of your changes you can do anything you want uh, and your project is, is your, your level of safety is increased tenfold um, and so that is pretty much uh, that's that's pretty much that I'm just gonna do one more quick edit uh, showing you a way to uh, uh, showing you how to, how to how to deal with changes um, so let's open up Visual Studio here I've got I've got this here and we'll say tbug.log um, that's my very important change set uh, so I'll go ahead and close this um, now it's recompiled if everything's there let's drop that onto a file an object in here and save I'll save this scene as my very important scene now I'll come over here and so here's all my changes. You can see that uh, this little, these little yellow dots here mean that the content of this file has changed. Um, and in fact, if if we had more than one set, you know, multiple lines of changes, you would see them all here. Um, so and you can stage the lines individually. So we can select that, and then come over here and stage those, those files as well. And let's say committing. A very important scene in the script. And commit files. Uh, and so now I've got, uh, if you look at over here, we've got this other, uh, another new co new commit here. And push that up. And so now it's on the website. So if we pop over to the GitHub website again, uh, we, we can refresh the website and. Here's our, uh, here is this. Um, now at this point, if you have, uh, this, this is where this demo is gonna end, but uh, if someone, if you wanna uh, collaborate with someone else, then you can just come invite them down here, members, and they can clone it. And when, when someone else clones this, they will just get all of the changes that you have. Um, and and uh, they'll, and it will keep itself up to date as long as they, as long as they fetch uh, which and pull, which gets the changes uh, and sort of brings them down. Um, I'll do. I'm going to do another video later about uh, working uh, in a team with Git. Um, but uh, that's uh, that is pretty much the end of this particular thing. Um, so, uh, so what are some of the uh, what some general advice for living with Git? Uh, first thing is commit often. Um, you really there's really no such thing as creating too many commit files. I mean, I guess there is, but th you're not likely to actually come across it. Uh, commits are free. They don't cost you anything. They don't uh, like they, they don't even really take up any more hard drive space or anything like that. Uh, they're uh, the only exception is if you add a file and then commit it and then delete that file and then commit commit the deletion. Uh, that file will still exist in your file history, so. Uh, so with when you're dealing with big big files, you do want to sort of keep an eye on that. Um, in general, the the best way that I like to do it is anytime I have sort of a chunk of work done, uh, then I then I'll commit. Uh, so you know, I'll make some changes. If I have to change multiple scripts that interact with each other, I change those all at the same time. At the same time, and once I've got all those changes done, then I'll hop over and commit, or at the very least, I'll stage them all at, the same, at that point. Um, but usually, I'll just commit. Um, uh, another time uh, is if you're going home for the day, uh, you want to commit and push. Um, you do want to make sure that you push pretty regularly, uh, just just to make sure that you have uh, uh, that that you have everything synced up. Um, 
uh, and you know because it's never never a good idea to have everything relying on just one central repository of of uh, you, you always want to have an offsite backup and pushing is how you get to it um, uh, speaking of which yeah push uh, and in general, just never go without source control. Um, you want this to be one of the first five things you do on a project. Uh, pretty much by the time you have any working scene at all, uh, you hopefully will have already created a repository for that project and, and, uh, and have your first commit. Uh, that's generally when you should do it. The further back you can go, uh, the better you're, better, but the better off you are. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the tutorial. Um, hopefully, that will help you get set up without any issues. Uh, and and uh, that's that's my guide. This has been uh, this has been Manta Mentoring, and I'll see you next time.